okay guys so last time we went over the normal distribution we started article 6.1 and that is nothing but the continuous probability distribution first we saw the uniform distribution that is also known as the rectangular distribution because we are going to get a rectangle and value of f or in a variable x and a b that is equal to one over b minus a that is simple and we just went over the new i mean to say mean and the standard deviation or you can say the variance mean and the variance and then after we went over the normal distribution and i um told you how to use the table for the normal distribution and then after we went over some of normal distribution area under the normal distribution how to find the area under the curve or normal curve and uh, whenever your new is different from zero and sigma is different from different than one in that case we can convert our values in terms of z and that can be written in the form of z equal to x minus nu over sigma if you use this formula that means now you are converting your new value to zero and your deviation standard deviation sigma is equal to one and then after we saw different type of figures some k values left right of the mean all these things we did and now today we are going to see okay and then after we went over the uh reverse normal curve or normal curve in reverse that means z equal to x minus nu over sigma can also be written as x x is equal to sigma z plus nu or nu plus sigma z in which we are given the sigma z value whenever you have some percentage value is given at that time keep in mind this thing that that is the z value is given and we can find the corresponding x value so that's what we did last time when we saw some examples too and today we're going to start the next article that is the application of the normal distributions now we are going to see that how in real life problem or some scientific problem or some physics problems something like that or mechanical problems where you can use the normal distribution it is highly useful normal distribution is highly useful so please keep this thing in mind some of the properties i mean to say some of those examples varieties of examples of course we are going to see over here for the normal distribution read this first example it says that the certain type of storage battery last on average three years with a standard deviation of 0.5 year so average life of the battery that is equal to three that means you are given the new value average life that is equal to three and the standard deviation is equal to 0.5 that means your sigma value is equal to 0.5 assuming the battery life is normally distributed normally distributed that means bell shaped curve find the probability that the given battery will last less than 2.3 years now less than 2.3 years look at over here average life is 3 average life is 3 that is your new and less than 2.3 that means uh average life it says that find the probability that the battery given battery one particular piece of battery's life is 2.3 years means less than the average life less than the average life that means we are moving on the left side of the curve left side of the normal distribution normal curve so this is my 3 2.3 you can of course there is somewhere over here but you can take like this 2.3 on the other side and less than this one that means you can start with zero time starts with zero so zero means one day two day three day or one year two year and 2.3 years and battery is gone it is something like this right guys so first of all just uh, let me all the examples i solved over here so it's not a big deal because we are given here new is not zero and standard deviation is not one so we are going to use the formula z equal to x minus new divided by sigma your x value which you are looking for 2.3 means you are given one battery uh one battery life that is 2.3 average battery new equal to average battery of the life, battery life that is equal to 3 and the standard deviation that is sigma equal to 0.2 0.5 so z is equal to negative 1.5 once you have z equal to negative 1.5 that means if you take 
x is less than 2.3 corresponding to your x, the new equal to 3 and sigma equal to 0.5. And that is equal to z is less than negative 1.4 corresponding to your x is equal to new equal to 0 and sigma equal to 1. That is the meaning. And if you use the table, just on the, go on the back of the book, as I told you last time, and if you look at the book, uh, I told you a page number, uh, uh, I mean to say, let me just let you page number 735, that is the 735 to 736. These two pages, they are based on the normal distribution. So you can use the same table and you will get this as the answer. So probability of that particular battery life is 2.3 years. Average is three, but that one particular battery life is 2.0.08. Extremely less probability. Look at over here, not even 0 .0. 0 0.0.8 is really very big, but 0 0.08 is extremely small number, right? So that probability is really very, very less. 2.3 years that is really with that probability for that probability of that particular battery will last long only for 2.3 years that is really very less that's the meaning so we are using this first figure over here for this example 6.7 and now we're going to use we're going to go for example 3 6.8 and we are going to use the second figure over here look at area of this one sounds good let's go for second example same kind of things but now we are going to get some x values between this and this Okay, 778 and 834. And new value equal to mean is equal to 800. Variance, uh, standard deviation sigma is equal to 40. So because I have two X values, 778 and 830 here, I had just one X value. So I just used my X is equal Z equal to X minus new over sigma, that formula just once. But here I have two X values. That means I'm looking for the area between these two values. That means I have to find Z1 and Z2. So that's why my Z1 equal to this one, my X value 778, my X2 another value 834 new and sigma they are same so just plug the values over here and you are going to get z1 equal to negative 0.55 and z2 equal to 0 0.85 that means my x values lies between 778 and 834 and its probability is equivalent to say the probability of z value that is between negative 0 0.55 to 8.55 and you know this thing just by our previous theoretical theoretical work article 6.2 you know this thing that that is equal to probability of z less than 0 0.85 minus probability of z less than 0 0.55. Again, you can use the table, you're going to get one answer over here from the table, page number 735, 36, and one answer over here. You can subtract that one and whatever you will get, that is your answer. The problem says something like this, an electrical form manufacturers like bulbs that have a life. Of course, every bulb has a life. Before burnout, that is normally distributed with the mean value of 800 hours. So mean value is 800 hours. Look at over here, that means usually electrical light bulb goes up to 800 hours. And the standard deviation of 40 hours, standard deviation of 40 hours. Find the probability that the bulb burns between 778 and 834 hours, 778 and 834 hours. Suppose in the same type of examples, usually people ask in the exam, but suppose that he or she may change the figures instead of 778, somebody says that 768, 765, and 840, something like that, right? So if that's why I always recommend my students not to memorize the answer, because if you memorize the answer and if somebody has changed the figure slightly, that means you, your whole example will be wrong and your examiner will immediately figure it out that you have memorized the answers. So don't do this thing, guys, always so many times, like we keep telling you this thing that always try to go through the specific method rather than considering or memorizing, memorizing the examples. That's not the way to learn the math, to memorize the things. Always try to use the concepts. Okay, so that's how you can find this. Uh, a, so this probability is 0 0.5111. So that means this probability is really good. It's not that bad, right? 0 0.5 is almost half of the probability. So that electrical bulb, uh, find the probability that a bulb burns, that electrical bulb burns between 778 hours to 860, uh, 834 hours, that probability is 0.5 or 0.5111. Usually we go for four decimals, uh, four numbers after decimal. So keep this thing in mind. Okay, next example is, just look at over here, in an industrial process, another example, we went through the electrical bulb means practical example, or you can say the electrical side example. My first exam, my second exam, my first example was almost, this is the mechanical type example, certain type of storage battery last 
or you can say electrical type example. Okay, my third example that is based on an industrial process, the diameter of a ball bearing is an important measurement. The buyer sets specifications for the diameter to be three plus or minus 0 0.01. Again, you have two numbers, three plus 0 0.01, that is 3.01 and three minus 0 0.01 is 2.99, right? Okay, so centimeters. Then uh, the implication is that no part falling outside the specification. That means whatever the numbers you have fixed, 2.99 and 3.01, no part is falling outside this one. Sounds good. <clears throat> outside, this uh, specification will be accepted, right? That means it has to be between these two. It is known that in the process of diameter of a ball bearing, see mechanical example, in the process of diameter of ball bearing is a normally distributed with the mean three and the standard deviation 0 0.005. On average, how many manufactured ball bearings will be scrapped, right? How many manufactured ball bearings will be scrapped? Scrapped, that means <clears throat> the numbers which are just outside your domain. Your domain is 2.99 to 3.01. That means if your ball bearing is lying in this region, that means it is accepted. But if it lies outside this one, it is scrapped, it will go to the scrap, right? And that is the question. That means you are going to find this part as well as this part. So please keep this thing in mind. Look at over here, this part and this part. Okay. So we have again two values of x, one is 2.99, one is 3.01. So I'm going to convert this one in Z1 and this one in Z2. So Z1 is x minus nu over sigma, x minus nu over sigma for different x. X is one is 2.99, one another is 3.01. And you have these two values, means my probability of x between 2.99 to 3.01 is equivalent to probability of negative two to two for Z value. That means Z value means again, your nu equal to zero and sigma equal to one. Okay. And then after we can find, this is nothing but you can write the same thing in the form of, uh, now what we are looking for, look at over here, guys. Both the sides, we have same value. Here is negative two and here it is two. It just differs, it differs by just negative sign. So I would say that you don't have to go through that. Of course, you have to go through a table just for one value, either you can go for negative two or positive two. Okay, and then after you can just change the sign or you can just multiply it by two. So, or you can just go through the usual process, but usually I do like this, whenever we have the same numbers, negative and two at that time, I just number uh, multiply that one by two. If I go for Z less than negative two, uh, Z less than two, that means if I go for uh, this value on the table, that probability I'm going to get 0 0.228 using table. So, and because it's a symmetry, because both the sides, they have exactly same thing, 0 0.228 and 0 0.228. Because of the symmetry, we can just multiply it by two. So no need to find another value, just multiply it by two. And if you multiply it by two, that is 0 0.0456, right? So that is your answer. That probability of getting the ball bearing, uh, what, what was the example? Yes, so how, uh, how many manufactured ball bearing will be scrapped? So probability of the number of ball bearings will be scrapped, will be in scrap that is really very low, 0 0.40456, right? So number of ball bearings will go to the scrap, will go to scrap that is really very low, 0 0.0456. Like this, you can solve the examples. One more example over here, that is the Gauges are used to reject all components for which a certain dimension is not within the specification of 1.50 plus or minus D. Now D value is not specifically mentioned over here. So I think we are looking for D value. So that sounds good. Okay, we are looking for D value. Okay, I'm sorry. Good. It is known that this, this measurement is normally distributed with mean 1.50 and the standard deviation 0.2. So nu is given, sigma is given, determine the value D such that the specification over 95% of the measurements. Look at over here, now 95% of the measurement that is given to you. Okay, guys, so 95% of the measurement. Okay, that sounds good. So I can start something like this. Uh, if you look at your table, so this 95%, this 95%, that means you can say something like this, uh, uh, 0 
right? And uh, this value 0 0.95 uh, that will go. So one minus 0 0.95. So let me just write it down for you. Let me just make sure this thing and then after I will let you know. So 0 0.95, one minus uh, 0 0.95, so 0 0.05 and 0 0.05, 0.0 and 5, okay. Okay, so this point uh, 95 that is given in this form, right? 0 0.95, that is your value given to you. 95 percentage means your probability of this, you know, this that is equal to this percentage is given to you, means this value is given to 0 0.95. And if you use that 0 0.95 in the tabular form, this 0 0.95 corresponds to, here it says 1.96, but I just looked at the table and it says that my calculation says is 1.64. So it should be negative 1.64 is less than C is less than 1.64. And that is equal to 0.95 because 0.95 that corresponds to 1.64, not 1.96. I'm sorry, guys, maybe some printing mistake. So once you have this one, 1.64, just plug that value 1.64 over here and your X value is 1.50 plus D minus 1.50 and this one. And uh, that means I can write my D is equal to this one. Here I have taken D equal to plus, but if you take negative, if you take negative, you're going to get some negative number over here and that is not valid. That's the reason I just figured it out. I just found this plus value means I just use the plus value. So that's the reason. <clears throat> okay, and you can see my figure is uh, also given over here that is equal to 1.5, that is the standard deviation and two is the, uh, sorry, 1.5 is the new mean and the two is standard deviation, right? Two is the standard deviation. Okay, and 95% that means naturally one minus 95, but on this side and this side, this area is 95%. So this one and this one is just 0 0.05. 0 0.05 divided by two because both sides they are equal. That means here it is, here it is 0 0.025 and here it is 0 0.025, 0 0.025. And uh, yes, so 0 0.025. Okay, let me just try to figure it out. Let me see 0 0.025. Point with uh, you one point ninety six. Okay, mm. I'm just looking the table. Anyway, yeah, my value says it is. That's fine. Okay, so that's how you can find the D value, right, guys? That's how one can find the D value. Okay, value or value of D. Okay, that sounds good. Let's go for another another example. And another example says that <clears throat> let's go for two more examples, and then after we we'll start the exercise problems. A certain machine makes electrical resistors having a mean. Now the electrical problem. The mean resistance of 40 ohms and the standard deviation 2 ohms, assuming that the resistance follows a normal distribution and can be measured to any degree of accuracy. What percentage of resistor will have a resistance exceeding 43 ohms? Exceeding 43 ohms means more than 43. And that's why we have to draw the picture like this. More than 43, that means you have to show your picture. Without picture, you cannot work. So please keep this thing in mind. Okay, so more than 43, that means this part. Okay, fine. Again, you can use the Z value 43 because Z value 43, X is equal to 43. Your new equal to 40 and Sigma equal to two. So 1.5 X is greater than 43 now. That is Z greater than 1.5 equivalent to say. And that is nothing but one minus probability of Z less than 1.5. And this, you know that Z less than 1.5, that is this one just by table. So you're going to get this one. This is the probability. Uh, or you can say percentage means it is actually 6.68% uh, 6.68% 6 of the registers will have a resistance exceeding 43 ohms. So resistance exceeding 43 ohms 
there are 6.68 percentage almost seven percentage you cannot write seven because it is 6.68 and that's that's the reason i always emphasize to go up to four numbers after the decimal okay next example is find the percentage of resistance exceeding 43 ohm of example 6.11 Find the percentage of uh, resistance exceeding 43 ohms, exceeding 43 ohms, for example, 6.11, if the resistance is measured to the nearest ohm. Okay, the resistance is, guys, please try to understand this thing. It says that find the percentage of resistances exceeding 43 ohms. Now, exceeding 43 ohms means you can you can take 43.1, 43.2, just for the safer side, or there's a usual practice. There is no rule at, uh, about this one, but I would like to go for 43.5 because you cannot take 43. You can take 43.1, sounds good. Nothing is wrong, but I think it is better to go for 43.5, something like this. Okay, so if here my X value is, you have to choose this value. Right, because it's exceeding 43 means just let me choose uh, this one. Here it is meant, and the problem is that we now assign a measurement of 43 ohms to all registers whose resistance are greater than 42.5 and less than, right? 43 means is greater than 242.5 and less than 43.5. And that's the reason, another reason we can say that I started with 43 because now exceeding 43 means we can start with 43.5. Okay, guys, so we are actually approximating a discrete distribution by means of a continuous normal distribution, right? So we are actually, what we are doing over here, discrete distribution by means of, we are approximating this discrete distribution. And that is the beauty of this normal distribution. It's just not continuous, but sometimes you can uh, approximate your discrete uh, distribution by the normal distribution. This is the example, and that's why this is a good example. The required area is the region shaded to the right of this one, right? Again, you can find z equal to 43.5, just the same example, but here 43.5, and 2, so 1.75. X greater than 43.5, equivalent to say that z greater than 1.75, and that is one minus because greater than value is there, so one minus z less than 1.75. Use the tabular for table and get the value over here, and this is the 0 0.0401, means 4.01 percentage. 4.01 percentage of the resistance exceeds 43 ohms when measured to the nearest ohm. You can stop over here. You can stop over here. I mean to say that you don't have to go up to the complete other uh, description, but you can stop over here, right? But this line is important. You have to mention because you are asked the question in terms of the electrical network system, electrical system, you have to answer in the same electrical language, electrical engineering language like this. The difference 6.68% and 4.01%, 6.68% that was over here, right? 6.68 percent that you are getting for strictly greater than 43 and 4.01 percent that you are getting for strictly greater than 43.5 percentage and that is equal to 2.67 percent in between this answer and that of the representation or that represents all those re uh, resistance value greater than 43 and less than 43.5. So if you want somebody, suppose somebody asks you that what are what is the value between suppose somewhere over here you have 43 and 43.5. So in between 43 and 43.5. Here I just ask you greater than 43, exceeding 43 or exceeding 43.5. Suppose somebody is asking you after this example 43 and 43.5, you have both the numbers just subtract and you can get the answer. Last example, almost I would say, and then we'll start the exercise problem. The average grade for an exam is 74. Look at here, average grade mean value. Deviation, standard deviation sigma equal to seven. If 12% of the class is given in, now we look at here guys, 12% is given to you. 12% means now area is given to you. Usually we are looking for the area probability. Now the area is given to you. That means it's a reverse case of normal distribution. So Z is equal to X minus nu over sigma. It's not like this, but X is equal to, yes, equal to nu plus sigma Z, right? We have to use that one. X is equal to nu plus sigma Z. That one we need to use. Okay, guys. 
So you can see over here, because this area 12% is given in 0 0.012, that is this area and uh, 0 0.012 area, right? 0 0.012 area, that means my Z value is provided to us. So X is equal to, X is equal to uh, sigma Z plus nu, right? Sigma Z plus new this 0 0.12 if you find this 0 0.12 in the tabular form you are going to get that is equal to that means this line is nothing but because previously this line was given to us 43 was the line this one was the line so now if i want to find the random variable x because the area is given 0 0.12 that area we can go into the tabular form find that 0 0.12 and that corresponds to 1.12 18. So this x value corresponds to 1.18, or you can say z value corresponds to 1.18. So x is equal to sigma uh, nu plus sigma times z. So nu is 74, sigma is 7, and z equal to 1.18. And that is equal to this one. So that's how you can and that's and the grades. Look at here now the example. If 12% of the class is given A, A grade, 12% percentage of the class total number of students, suppose 100 students are there, out of 112 are getting A grade. And the grades are curved to follow our normal distribution. What is the lowest possible A and the highest possible B? Lowest possible A and highest possible B. So the lowest possible A, the lowest A, look at 82.26, right? So lowest A is 83 and highest B is 82. You can say like this because that is in between. 82 and 83. So lowest A is 83 and highest B is 82. Highest B is 82. That's how you can solve the example. Okay, guys, one more example is over here. That is also same as this one X value. You can go through this one, right? And uh, I think now let's go for some practical, I mean to say exercise problems. So I would like to go over one of the problems. I solved 6.1 last time. So today I would like to go for 6.3 and then we will select other examples too. 6.3 says that <clears throat> the daily amount of coffee in liters dispensed by a machine located in an airport lobby is a random variable X having a continuous uniform distribution A equal to seven and B equal to 10. Uh, I don't know this example is really because it's a uniform normal distribution. So it's okay, we can go over this one. Uh, I think we did this examples too, right? Uh, anyway, let's go for this one. So, uh, that is equal to this one, A equal to seven and B equal to 10. That is the rectangular distribution or uniform normal distribution. Find the probability that on a given day, the amount of coffee dispensed by this machine will be at most 8.8 liters. At the most 8 point, means X is less than 8.8. .8. More than 7.4 and less than 9.5 means probability of 7.4 7.4 is less than X is less than 9.5 and at least 8.5 liters, at least 8.5 liters. This example is simple guys, because it's just a rectangular distribution. So let me share my whiteboard to you guys. And my whiteboard says that, look at here. It says that example number 6.3 exercise, exercise problems. So example 6.3 and my A is given to a seven, my B is equal to 10. Naturally my interval A to B, that is nothing but seven and 10 and B minus A, B minus A is equal to 10 minus seven and that is equal to three because we want B minus A, right? My A part says that probability of X at the most 8.8 .8 liters. So X is less than or equal to 8.8, 8.8 .8 liters, right? So that is equal to my X value. So that is equal to 8.8, .8, right? That is equal to X value. That means I can write 8.8 .8 minus seven divided by three. You can say like this, 8.8 .8 minus seven divided by three. My B value that is equal to 
B value is equal to probably my B part is more than 7.4. So 7.4 is less than X and less than 9.5, less than 9.5. That is equal to, I can say 9.5 minus 7.4 because it's just A minus B, right? And divided by, divided by three, divided by this three. So you can say like this, my C part is my probability of X is greater than or equal to at, at least 8.5 liters. So greater than or equal to 8.5. And that is nothing but my 10 minus 8.5 divided by three. And whatever you're gonna get this is 0 0.50. That is the answer, right? Here you're gonna get that is equal to 9.5 and 7.4. So 2.1 and seven. So that is equal to 21 by seven. So 70, so 0 0.70. And here it is 88.8 .8 minus one, so 81.8 .8 and 0 0.60, so 0 0.60. So that's how you can solve the examples based on, I would say, rectangular distribution. My next example that is based on the, uh, I don't think that you require any kind of help for this next example, but again, let me just go for the book. And book says, the, oops, sorry. That is my book. Okay. So my book says that uh, my next example is, let me go for, you can go for example, 6.5, but just simply you, you are using over here the table. Given the standard normal distribution, find the area under the curve that lies like this, right? That lies to the left of Z negative 1.39, left of Z negative 1.39, right of Z 1.96, between the Z value negative 2.16 and 0 0.65 negative. To the left of Z 1.43, to the right of Z negative 0 0.89, between Z equal to this one and Z equal to this one, right? All Z values are, given and you can again use it. I can go over this one, but you have to work with me. Just keep your book open, or I would say just table open page number 735, 736. And I will speak all of this A, B, C, D, E, F one by one, and we can have the answer. So let me again stop sharing this one and let me start with my whiteboard. So my whiteboard and example 6.5. So 6.5 says that, A part, it says that to the left of Z equal to negative 1.39. So if you have some numbers like this, given the standard normal distribution, find the area under the curve that lies between to the left of Z equal to negative 1.39. Okay. Negative 1.39 and left of negative 1.39. If you use the table, you're going to get so that area is equal to, uh, let me see here, and negative 1.39. So negative 1 and negative 1.3, I would say, negative 1.3 and 9. So page number 735, negative 1.3 on Z value. And then after that is a vertical line, first line. And they can go for the horizontal line, one negative 1.3 and negative 1.39. So 1.3 and 9, that is 0 0.0823, 0 0.0823. So this area equal to 0 0.0823, like this. My B, B part is, to the right of Z equal to 1.97. So here it is 1.97 and to the right of Z equal to 1.97. So here I can find area 1.9, I can find on my first line and then after this is 1.9 and then after corresponding to 0 0.07, whatever the value is matching here on the table, that is the value. And here in my table, we have that value, uh, that is greater than right, right of this one. That means first of all, what I need to do, that is equal to, yes, please, 1.97. So it is 
first of all, let me find this 1.97. This 1.97 is 0 0.9750, 0 0.9750. But because it is this one and whole area is one, whole area is one. So I can write one minus 0 0.9750. And whatever the number we are getting, that is the answer. So when your greater than sign is there, always you have to subtract from one. Please keep this thing in mind. Then after I would like to go for C part, C part says that between Z equal to, now between Z equal to, yes, please, negative 2.16, negative 2.16, and 0 0.065, okay. Uh, I would say somewhere over here, 0 0.065, negative zero point, not this one, negative. Zero point zero sixty five, right? So we are looking for this one. So naturally, I can find this thing, something like this: the area or the probability is equal to z is less than negative zero sixty five minus probability of z is less than negative two point one six. And whatever the numbers you are getting, that is equal to here. You are going to get zero point two five seven eight minus 0 0.0154 and the number you are getting there is the answer then after i would like to go for d part d part says that to the left of z equal to so left of z is equal to z equal 1.43 1.43 same thing guys so 1.43 that is somewhere over here and left means this one left means this one that means whatever 1.4 and 3 values are there on the table. So directly you can find area. Area is equal to 0 0.9236, 0 0.9236. So A, B, C, D, now let me write E part. To the right of Z equal to, to the right of Z equal to negative 0 0.89. Okay, so Z is equal to negative 0 0.89 negative 0 0.89 and right of this one means this one. So first of all, find negative 0 0.89. So you have negative 0 0.8 is somewhere over here, negative 0 0.8 and nine, that is somewhere 0 0.09. So if you combine this one, this and this, you're gonna get negative 0 0.89 negative 0 0.89 and that value. Whatever the value, this value you're going to get, that is equal to 0 0.1867. You have to subtract this one because on the right of this one, your total area is this one. So it is 1 minus 0 0.1867, right? Because whatever values you are finding over here, guys, please keep in mind this thing, that value is nothing but this one. You are finding this value. So this value actually 0 0.1867 that corresponds to this area, that corresponds to this area. And we are looking, we are asked to find this area. That means total area is one. So we have to subtract one minus this one. So we are getting this one. So one minus this one. So we are getting the answer. And then A, B, C, D, E, and then F, it says that between, between negative 0 0.48, z equal to negative 0 0.48 and 1.74 z is equal to 1.74 so this one right between these two so that is simple because probability of z uh, probability of i would say that negative 0 0.48 is less than x is less than uh, probability of 1.74 1.74, right? That is equal to, or you can say Z. Right, guys? So that is equal to probability of Z equal to this one and Z equal to this one. That sounds good. So that is equal to probability of Z less than 1.74 minus probability of Z less than 0 0.48 negative. So here you're going to add one value. Uh, that value is, uh, if you use the book table, uh, you're going to get 0 0.95, uh, let me double check, 1.79. So 1.7 and 9, so 0 point, uh, 1 point, 
is it oh, sorry positive or negative i messed up 95 one point uh, let me double check guys it says that uh, between z equal to 1.74 my bad 1.74 so 1.7 and then 4 1.7 and then 4 is equal to 0 0.9591 that's what i found that sounds good and same way you can find z negative 0 0.4 negative 0 0.4 you are going to get over here negative 0 0.4 and somewhere over here you are going to get 8 so corresponding value is here and that value is 0 0.3156 and whatever you're going to get that's your answer so that's how you can find this one let me just save this one so save in a folder okay and then now let me clear the drawing okay guys so now again i would like to go to the book and book says that uh, which example we can go over now? I think uh, all examples are good, but we can go over now some practical examples because you know this thing, how to find the values. Example 6.8, I would recommend to go over because now instead of Z, X value is given to you. So whenever X value is given, then U equal to 30 and Sigma equal to 6. Right. Previously, directly Z value was provided to us. So we were good in a shape. I mean to say that standard deviation was 1. So, because Z values are there, so Z is given implies that my nu is equal to zero and sigma is equal to one. Sigma is equal to one. But suppose my X value is given, that means first of all, you have to use the formula Z equal to X minus nu divided by sigma. Use that formula over here and then up you're going to get some Z value. Once you get the Z value, then up you can go for the table and find the value. So example A, B, and C, you are good for this one because one is right, right of this one, that means you have to subtract from one. Left means you don't have to do anything. Between X equal to 32 and 41, 32 and 41, that means between these two. In that case, you are going to get one Z value here, one Z value here. In between means your probability of that Z1 is lay or one value is less than Z is less than second value like this. But here example number D 80 percentage means now the area itself is provided to us. Probably area is given to you that is 0 0.8, right? 0 0.8 area is given to you and value of X that 0 0.8 normal curve to the, to the left means you don't, don't have to subtract anything. So it is 0 0.8. And did 0 0.8, you have to find that 0 0.800, very nearer number in the tabular form. I mean to say in that uh, page number 735, 736, find that number very close to 0.80 or 0 0.8000. And that value will be your Z value. Then use the formula X is equal to, X is equal to uh, nu plus sigma C nu plus sigma c and that's how you can find your x value and same over here this is left this is right i think so or middle of middle of the normal curves that kind of middle of 75 percentage so this way you can just find so it is simple but i request you please try to go over 6.8 if you have some doubt you can ask me and i would like to jump to the or switch over to the real life problems 6.11. I think that's a nice example. Probably all are good, but this is a good one. It says that now 6.11. So let's solve this 6.11. And then after we will be doing uh, 6.11. And then if you want, we can go over one more problem and then stop. Okay. A soft drink machine. Just give me a minute, guys. I think it's really a well, little dark. So let me start the light. Let me switch on the switch on the lights. Okay, maybe a little good. So it says that a soft drink machine is regulated so that it discharges an average of 200 milliliters per cup. Right, a soft drink machine is regulated so that it discharges an average of 200 milliliters per cup. If the amount of drink is normally distributed with the standard deviation, 
equal to 15 milliliters, right? Amount of drink is normally distributed with the standard deviation. Standard deviation is given to you and average value 200, that means new value is provided to you. So normal distribution new is 200, standard deviation is 15. First part, what fraction of the cups will contain more than 224 milliliters? Is 200, 224 means right off 200. You have to put vertical line over there, 224. And it says that what fraction of cups will contain more than, means 224 and more. That is the first example. Second one, what is the probability that a cup contains between 191 and 209? 191, that is on left of 200, 209 is right of 200. You have to make that rectangle, I mean, so that area means you're going to get two values and we will work on it. Then after, how many cups will probably overflow if 200 cups are used for next 1,000 drinks, right? 200, where is it? I'm sorry. How many cups will probability overflow if 200 milliliter, milliliter cups are used for the next 1,000 drinks? <clears throat> Good. So here, uh, next 1,000 drinks. So we will solve this part too, right? How many cups to no, overflow if 230 milli? 230 means your x value is 230. So z equal to x minus new divided by sigma, 230 minus 100, uh, 200 divided by 15, like this. You will solve that one. And below what value do we get the smallest of 25 percentage? Means area is given to you 0.25. That means that 0.2500, that value I'm going to find, corresponding value I'm going to find in the table, and I will find the z value. Once I have z value, I'm going to use the formula, reverse one, reverse normal distribution, x equal to nu plus sigma c, and I can find my x value. So that is, that's how we are going to solve that example. So this example provides us almost all the information, whatever you have learned in a theoretical portion. So I will speak again one by one ABCD part and we'll solve the example. Just keep in mind this thing, 200 is your new 15, is your standard deviation. First example, 224. Let me again share my whiteboard. <clears throat> example number, I would say, the example number is, uh, what, 6.11? 6.11. First of all, standard deviation. My new is equal to what I gave you 200, right? 200 and my sigma is equal to 15 milliliters. 15 milliliters, 200 milliliters and 15 milliliters. What fraction of cup will obtain more than 224, more than 224, I would say that two twenty four and more means this one. This is my a part more than two twenty four. I recommend I mean say, yes, I recommend to draw the picture every time. Please, I emphasize you guys to draw the picture without picture. It's not doesn't at least for me doesn't make sense. Please draw the picture that will help you a lot. So now I can write z is equal to x minus nu divided by sigma. x is equal to 224. This x value is given to us 224 minus 200 divided by sigma is equal to 15. That means 24 divided by 15. And if you count this one using your calculator, you're going to get 1.6 if I'm not wrong. Yes, 15 and 9, 15, 9, 15 6 and 90, so 1.6, makes sense. Okay, good. So my probability of Z greater than 1.6, actually probability of x is greater than 224 is equivalent to say that probability of z greater than that is equal to 1 minus probability of z less than 1.6. 1.6, just use this one a table. Table, what was the number? A4, I forgot. Yes, table A4. So, Table A4, and you're going to get that is equal to one minus one minus that number 
and whatever you're going to get, that is your answer. So this is the answer. So that's how you can solve that example. My second example, my B part. B part says that, what is the probability that a cup contains between 191 New equal to 200, 191, and 209, and 209. So your x values are given over here, 191 and 209. So what I'm going to do, first of all, let's first try Okay, let's first try to find our Z1. So Z1 is equal to again the same formula, X minus nu over sigma. So let me just directly plug the values. So I'm going to write 191 minus 200 divided by 15. And that is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, negative 0 0.6, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, nine and six, so 15, six. Uh, okay, and Z2 is equal to 209 minus 200 divided by 15. So that is equal to 0 0.6 again, because nine plus and minus, that sounds good. So probability of, because of this one, probability of 191 is less than X is less than 209. That is equal to probability of negative 0 0.6 is less than C is less than 0 0.6. 0 0.6 and you can just find one probability other is, is just multiplied by two you can say like this or you can find separately so that is equal to 0 0.7257 for this one or let me write separately i think that is better if you write uh, separately okay so That is equal to probability of Z is less than 0 0.6 minus probability of Z is less than negative of 0. Point, negative of 0 0.6. And that is equal if you plug 0 0.7257 minus 0 0.2743. And subtract this one, whatever the number you're going to get, that is your 4, 5, 4, and 1. Yes, that is your answer. Okay, then let me go for C part. C part says that how many cups will probably overflow if 230 milliliters cups are used for the next thousand drinks? For the next thousand drinks, that's okay, but we want 230 now. So I can again draw the picture. And this is my new equal to 200, 230, my X value that is somewhere over here. How many cups will probably overflow if 230 milliliters cups are used for the next thousand drinks, right? So my X is equal to this one and X is greater than 230, right? How many cups will be probably overflow if 230 millimeters cups are used? So overflow means greater than. So 230 millimeters cups are used. Here it was this one. Anyway, so my Z is equal to 230 minus 200 divided by 15. That is equal to 2.0. And my probability of X is greater than 230. That is equal to probability of Z is greater than 2.0. And that is equal to one minus probability of Z less than 2.0. And that is equal to one minus, just get this value. And whatever you are going to get, that is suppose one minus 2.0 and one minus that is equal to 0 0.8, 8 and 60, 78. So I can write one minus this one that is equal to 0 0.0228, 0 0.0228, right? So that is for one cup and we have thousand cups. So therefore thousand, sorry, thousand, what, what is that? Used for next thousand drinks. Okay, so thousand cups, you have to multiply by this one. So thousand multiplied by 0 0.0228 and that is equal to naturally 20, 2.8 are approximate means, and with 2.8 means that is not, cups are always discrete numbers, right? There is approximately, I would say 23 cups. So 23 cups will overflow. 23 cups will overflow. Now I would like to go for D part. 
D part. Part D says that below what value do we get the smallest of 25% of the drink? Below what value do we get the smallest of 25% of the drink? Right. So this area is given to us. This area is nothing but 0 0.25. 25 percentage okay so 0 0.25 good so 0 0.25 this corresponds to if you find 0 0.2500 in your table these are your z value these are your point value so somewhere over here zero you are going to get two point no zero point two five zero zero and that corresponds just go like this and go like this so this value and this value you are measuring so that z value over here for this example negative 0 0.67 negative 0 0.6 and this implies that my x is equal to yes nu plus sigma z so nu is equal to 200 sigma is equal to 15 and z value now i figure it out negative 0 0.67 negative 0 0.67 if you multiply this one you're going to get one number don't round that number. So, milliliters, milliliters, this much of milliliters, right? So, below what value do we get the smallest of 25 percentage of drinks? So, small 25 percent of this may much of milliliters, they are below 25 percent of the drink. So, that's how you can solve the examples, guys. I think I solved almost all the examples. I mean, it's all kind of examples. And if you want, we can go over last example, then we will stop. So let me go for one more example. And that example is, uh, I would say 6.14 uh, is good, or you can go for 15 is also good. 14, I think that's very simple. You can, be, it's exactly similar to the previous one, A, B, C, just three parts are there. So let me skip this three, 6.14, 6.15, you can do it by your own. Okay, so let me now clear the picture. And I would like to go for six point fifteen, the last one. Six point fifteen. It says that uh, let me first share my book with you so that at least you can have the flavor of the example, and then after we will start the example. So my Book says 6. Point, uh, sorry, 15 is here. A lawyer comm commutes daily from his suburban home to his midtown office. A lawyer commutes daily from his suburban home to its midtown office. The average time for a mid uh, one way trip is 24 minutes, office to home to office, with a standard deviation. Right, average time is 24 minutes, new equal to 24. Standard deviation is 3.8 minutes. Assume the distribution of trip times to be normally distributed. Okay, assume the trip time is normally distributed. What is the probability that a trip will take at least half an hour? One by one, 0 0.5 and greater than greater. Here it is. Okay, 24 minutes. Half an hour means you can say 30 minutes. So 30 minutes means right of 24 and at least half an hour. It's at least half and more. If the office opens at 9 a.m. and the lawyer leaves his house at 8.45 a.m., see the practical example. What percentage of the time is he late for work? What percentage of time? Your percentage of time you're looking for, right? That he will be late for the work. Third example, sorry, third part is if he leaves the home at 8.35 a.m. and coffee is served at the office from 8.50 to 9, what is the probability that he misses the coffee? Find the length of time above which we find the slowest 15 percentage of the trips, right? Area is given to you, find X value. Find the probability that two of the next three trips will take at least half hour. Two of, two of the next three trips will take at least half hour. Nice example. Let me solve this example. And that's the end. Oh, I mean, say 
end of this article and we'll stop. So let me start here, the last one, 6.15. Okay, 6.15, the first one says that Z is equal to A part, A part. What is the probability that a trip will, so first of all, my normal distribution, my new value, new is equal to 24 minutes, and my standard deviation is equal to 3.8 minutes. 3.8 minutes. Okay. What is the probability that the trip will take at least half hour? Half hour means 30 minutes. 30 minutes means right of this one. So this is 30. We are looking for this one. Okay. So now Z is equal to First of all, z is equal to x minus nu divided by sigma. x is equal to 30 minus 24 divided by 3.8. Use your calculator. Let me use my calculator. Uh, 30 minus and 3.8, 1.58. 1 1.58. So probability, probability of x is greater than 30 is equal to probability of z greater than 1.58 is equal to 1 minus probability of z less than 1.58, right? And if you find this one and subtract from 1, you are going to get this one, right? 571. Okay, that is A part. Now, let me go for B part. B part says that if the coffee opens at 9 a.m. and the lawyer leaves his office at 8.45 a.m., what is the probability? What percentage of the time is it late for the work? What percentage of the time? Now, what time office starts? Office starts at 9. And he leaves the home at 15, uh, 8.45. Office starts at 9. That means I have to do something like this. So 15 minutes, right? So that 15 minutes is my X value. Of he starts at nine and he, star, he starts at 8.45 from the home. And at least it requires 24 minutes or 30 minutes or 24 minutes, that's the average time. Right guys? So that means I can start like this, that Z is equal to 15 minus 2.4, not 24, my bad. 15 minus 24 divided by 3.8. That is equal to negative 2.37. So probability of X is greater than 15 is probability of Z greater than negative 2.37. And again, that is equal to one minus probability of Z less than negative 2.37. Use your this one, you know, this one, so that and finally subtract from one, you will be getting 0 0.9911. So he is late by 99 point. That means you can write like this if you want, that he is, or he will be late, he is late, he is late 99.11 percentage of the time, of the time. Naturally, because see, mean time is 24 and he leaves home just before 15 minutes. He has to have at least, if it is close to 24, suppose 23 or like this, that this probability would be really very less. But here, 100% he will be late, right? Or almost the 100% he is late. Okay, then after let me go for C part. C part. It says that, if, the, if he leaves the home at 8.35 now, 25 minutes before, I mean to say, then the office starts. The coffee serves at the office from 8.50. Okay, again, 8.50 to 9 a.m. What is the probability that he misses the coffee? That means he has to be over there before 9. My right, guys? Okay. So we can again start like this, that <coughs> Z is equal to 
z is equal to now coffee starts at nine so my x value is equal to 25 right because nine minus eight point twenty eight point thirty five so that is equal to 25 minutes so that means my x value equal to 20 25 so i can write x 25 or you can say something like this my mean value new equal to 24 and x value is equal to 25 is x is equal to 25 and my sigma is equal to 3.8 and this what that's what we are looking for. Sounds good. So my z is equal to 25 minus 24 divided by 3.8. Okay, 3.8 and I am getting uh, 0 0.26. So probability of x greater than 25 is equal to probability of z greater than 0.26 and that is equal to 1 minus probability of z less than 0.26 and if you find this probability and subtract uh, you are going to get 1 and 1 this number minus 3 9 7 4 3 9 7 4 okay then let me go for d part D part. D part says that find the length of time above which we find the slowest 15 percentage of the trip. Trips. Find the length of time above which we can find slowest 15 percentage of the trip. Try to understand this thing, guys. Slowest 15 percentage of the trip. Right. So first of all, uh, Zero point one five. That is fifteen percentage. That means whenever in your table page number seven thirty five, seven thirty six, just find zero point zero point one five zero 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 point one five zero somewhere over here. You have to find the corresponding values. So this and this we are going to match to get our z value. And that z value you are going to get here here that is equal to one point zero. And here it is zero point four. So 1.04, so my z is equal to 1.04. z equal to 1.04, and therefore I can write x is equal to nu plus z, uh, z sigma. So nu is equal to 24, z is equal to 1.04, and my sigma value is also known, known to us that is equal to 3.8. If you use your calculator, you're going to get that is equal to 27 point. 27.952 or 952 minutes. 952 minutes. Okay, that is D. And now last part is part number E. It says that find the probability that two of the next three trips will take at least. You don't have to use a normal distribution. You can use over here the binomial distribution too. Using the binomial distribution, we can find what is my probability. Uh, find the probability of two out of two of next three trips. Two of next three trips means um, out of three, two trips. Am I right? That means your probability will 0 0.50571. So using binomial distribution, using binomial distribution, with p value p is equal to 0 0.0571 we get we get binomial of binomial of yes x value is 2 out of 3 so n equal to 3 and p is 0 0.0571 right x n and p Okay, what was the definition? That was equal to 3C2 NCX. Then P, P is 0 0.0571 to the power X, X is 2, right? NCX and P to the power X and Q to the power, Q means one minus this one. Q is equal to P plus Q is equal to one. So Q is equal to one minus P. Keep in mind these things. So one minus P, that is equal to 0. 
zero point nine four two nine nine four two nine and here it is n minus x so n minus x x and n minus x this was the formula so n minus x is equal to three minus two that is equal to one simply one so just use your calculator and you can get the answer maybe your this is probably 0 0.0092 something like that you will get so that is the end of this article and next time we are going to start the next article and that will be article number 6.5 that is easy i don't want to continue with this one but i will we are going to start article 6.6 .6, that is gamma and exponential distribution and gamma and exponential distribution with some examples and that is the end of this chapter and maybe chi distribution to a little bit about the chi distribution chi chi distribution because all other distribution way uh, other distributions are i would say uh, beta distribution beta then log normal distribution Weibull distribution, all these distributions that is for the next higher engineering statistical course, statistical engineering course. And that's why I just would, don't want to conclude, uh, include that part over here. So let me conclude and uh, let me go over this one. Let me save this file. And that's it, guys. So thank you so much. And let me stop uh, sharing my screen. Thank you. See you next time.